Hi, my name is Andrew McLaren. Today we're going to talk about SCP number four in the NGSS, um, which is about assessing students' graphs and data analysis. Now, I've made a really nice rubric with ChatGPT that I want to show you guys. But before we get there, we're going to talk a little bit about how we have to shift our focus for this practice. Um, my journey kind of with grading, which you can totally skip. No need to watch that if you don't want to. Um, same with the chat GPT conversation that helped me make this. But then I'll be getting to the um, the rubric that I'm currently really liking for this practice. Um, there is a lot of overlap between SCP 4 and 5 with mathematical thinking and data analysis. So I've spent a long time really trying to figure out what falls where with different expectations and criteria. And I wanted to give you an example of this rubric in action. Um, I'm pretty excited. This stuff like took me a long time to wrap my brain around, but once I did, it kind of just fell into place really, really nicely. When teachers talk about graphing in science classrooms, the focus is almost always on making the graph, like making sure your X and Y axes are to scale and um, good labels on those, those graphs and all that stuff. That is important. And I do include that element in my rubric, but the focus is not around just making a graph, but actually using that to compare parts, look for trends and understand possible sources of error. And so if you're looking for just a rubric for graphing, I've got you, I've got those at the very, very end. But this talk is all about more about analyzing graphs and getting that type of um, expectation to be clear with students so they can improve on the throughout the whole year. So for teaching students how to um, analyze graphs and make graphs, a big part that I used to focus on, like most people, is making graphs and making sure their axes are good and that that data collection is down. Um, and so this is some stuff that I've done in the past to help support that. And um, some other teachers helped with, with making that as well from one of the schools I started at. But basically, this is um, a very common approach to teaching graphs is like, hey, have you got all the stuff in your x and y axes? Is it present? Is it there? Bundle of points, how many points out of 20 or whatever did you get, right? Um, and then another colleague of mine, here's some stuff that they've done around supporting like making graphs. So there's definitely some things that I've seen and done with students on around making graphs, but then it's like just another class assignment, just 10 more points for another day's worth of work. <laughs> with no feedback, right? And so there's a lot of issues with with that approach of not providing feedback and students don't view this stuff as important if we're not scoring it as test points, right? And so then there's a another thing here where I was like, okay, I want three different data points and three different graphs and you're telling me what's going on with those um, for a different experiment. So it's a very similar sort of thing. Um, here we do have a longer engineering process and so it's kind of incorporated into here um, but there's like some sort of graph that you have to include in your pre presentation of data but that gets a little murky it's going into other practices for sure i've also had students have to make um, things using uh, google uh, sheets and i've given them videos on how to do that and so that's definitely a thing that is incorporated into this this use of technology as well with this skill and then we can do like, um, yeah, very similar sort of thing. This is, just seems like a bundle of points though. Honestly, it's just 30 points with various aspects to it. And then this is this is getting more into like the traditional like quiz that you might see. Um, this is like Punnett squares, which is a representation of data, right? And so there's some sort of elements of what's going off Punnett squares and the numbers in there where you can talk about the stats and why it's not a perfect like 9331 ratio or or like a 3 to 1 ratio isn't always the case. You can talk a little bit like about the numbers and that element, but this focuses more on like the traditional put the numbers in the right spot and tell me what's going on. Um, but I might include this to talk more about the numbers and the sample size and that type of stuff in that quiz to um, include better expectations around data analysis. Um, and then this is just like slides that I've done around supporting students with like Punnett squares. So you can see it's not very clear um, my expectations in terms of getting them to being successful around this skill. I've also done this one determining a reaction if it happened um, 
and this was I think I ended up doing a CER for this one, but like there's a lot of data and there's graphs that you need to fill in. So the, the skill of data collection is still present and like sorting that in the CER, but then I'm like focusing all on this writing of an argument from that evidence that they're pulling from the data table. So they're having to use it in the CER, but it seems off target to me. So I've had a lot of issues with this where I'm like, okay, this seems to be kind of getting along the right direction. And this is definitely including this practice here, but I'm not giving them clear feedback in terms of why st some students did better or worse. I mean, I'm not giving it any feedback on the making of the data table or filling it out um, on that last piece is just all writing. So it takes a little shift to shift away from this type of focus to what I'm hoping to have us do in, in the future. So before I actually chat with chat GPT around this, I tried to make my own rubric. It didn't go great, um, but I was looking at Appendix F, like this is just a screenshot here from Appendix F talking about this particular practice around data analysis. And I was really struggling. Um, I came up with a couple categories, um, but then I was having a hard time figuring out what I wanted to put in for like the two, the one, and the zero. Um, and it didn't seem to quite work. There was some stuff that just seemed to overlap in weird ways, and I wasn't liking what I was getting or what I was seeing from Google when I was Googling it. So I ended up asking ChatGPT, like, hey, um, can you help me brainstorm? And it totally did a really nice job around this. Um, and so I asked it to, at first, focus on this um, SCP number four. And basically, um, this is what it gave me. Or actually, it just, I, I yeah. I asked it about all the practices, and then, where is it? Yeah, I asked it for just four right here, and it gave me a couple things. You can kind of see the categories even just at this point that they're talking about here and how we end up, um, I'll close that, I don't need that open right now. <laughs> you can see that basically I've incorporated some elements of what they have even in this first pass here about the, um, what is important. And then there's like communication, which is not something that is important to me, that communication of the data that goes into the next practice. But there's um, limitations already is right there. I really like that limitation right here. And so that ended up being this category. And then there's like relationships. And so that's kind of like this conclusion piece um, or what I ended up kind of shifting into um, after giving it some feedback on what I liked about it. Um, and then I was like, okay, what limits how good the analysis is? And that limitation is what it said I used to inform what I filled in there. So you can even see like sample size, um, that kind of stuff is time and resources used in the analysis. All that stuff is directly pooled from what it said here. So I really did like a lot of some of those criteria that it was giving me. It was just not quite right. Um, and then you can see right here in this conversation, um, we continued our, our little chat um, for graphs and figures. Um, and that was kind of interesting because it was like representation, this data representation piece um, kind of came into here. And I really liked that, how I was talking about some of those aspects in there. So I incorporated some of the things like the um, significant errors or emissions in terms of scale, like that type of stuff is important, right, for this. So it needs to make sure that um, there are categories that are used and all that stuff. And then I was having a hard time because there's a lot of overlap with this next SCP, which is probably going to be my next video that comes out. So here's a little preview into what it ended up being. But like when you're talking about sources of error, it kind of a, a applies to a couple different standards in a couple different places. Um, and then I just straight up asked ChatGPT, where should I put sources of error? <laughs> like, help me, I'm really struggling with that. Um, and then it's like, okay, that's more closely aligned to four. And I was like, well, what about five? How does that kind of overlap? Um, and that helped me a little bit. Now, I didn't really like, it kind of failed and fell on its face there. Um, in terms of making the actual data table. 
but I got what I needed. Like this was really, really useful stuff. And that was all that I needed to kind of refine this and get this to how I want it. So here's the rubric. I'm not going to read out the whole thing, but you can see that there's like uh, three through zero. Um, in general, if they've done something, they should be getting a weak score. Strong is kind of hard to do. If a student included all of this just naturally without a prompt, I would be just blown away, super impressed. Um, if you gave them some prompts, most students should be able to get to the strong level. So the way that I've split this is with some scaffolded version versus not scaffolded. So they should be able to do this without um, any scaffolding in the, the strong category. And then if you're looking for a rubric just for graphs, this works out OK. Similar sort of format on that 3, 2, 1, 0 scale. So the students really know what this number really means. It's like, hey, you're good at this skill or uh, kind of weak at this skill. We need to work on this. Um, and, and it seems a lot less intimidating in my mind to increase your score when it's formatted like this. And then also for figures, because a figure is slightly different than a graph, got a slightly different set of expectations. But yeah, that's that's basically it. Um, I really like the categories that I got from chat, but had to heavily modify it based off of what, what we were seeing. So here's the handout that I would give students for this. And there's a couple different versions. You could just literally tell them to do the analysis and just give them a blank space to do that. And they should be doing that to get the strong category, in my opinion. Um, just based off the rubric, they should be able to get the information sorted in here. It might be kind of a pain to grade it, though, if it's just completely free form like that. Um, so you might want to do some color coordination for that. I do a lot with my CER rubrics. If you're curious, you can kind of check out what I do with that with the colors. Um, you can just give them bullet points where they answer those bullet points in short sentences. Definitely a lot easier to do. And you can see these questions line up directly with the, the rubric. Um, and then there's also a sentence frame version, which I actually, I believe that this was made a little bit with chat GPT, so it might need a little bit of fine tuning. Um, but I, I did do a little bit of tweaking as well myself to include some parts that weren't included that were on the rubric. And then if you want to see this actually for an assignment, this is what it might look like where you give them a question that they need to um, investigate and methods like all that stuff isn't really being assessed. So you can kind of just give that to them directly, but they need to record their data um, and put it in a graph and figure. So you can give that with varying degrees of support. If you want to give them a video to kind of go along with making the graph, that'd be something that I've done in the past. Um, but it's, it's kind of tricky because you've got this data section, this graph section that are definitely being graded. And then this analysis section as well, but you might be doing some calculations in between for that SCP five. So SCP five, unfortunately gets kind of sandwiched between these two parts of four in a lab report a lot of the time, unless there's no calculations that are needed. Sometimes that's the case. Um, yeah, I think that that's it. Um, this should be on Teachers Pay Teachers. Let me know if you need help. Okay. Thank you for McLearning with me. Before you go, please check out the following services that I offer with my business. So if you click the link in my videos, this goes to my website. I might be changing it from Podia because I'm no longer doing the interactive videos for sale. I might put those up for free, um, but most of my other services are linked here. So you can see that I've got like a Teachers Pay Teachers and a Wiseant. Um, the Teachers Pay Teachers has a lot of my assessments that I have for like the NGSS, as well as lessons that I made when I was actually a teacher in the classroom. So I've got quite a few things like CERs and other things on there. Um, if you want to get one-on-one -on -one live support from me, either like with science or like working on um, like teaching support lessons and that kind of stuff, uh, you can sign up through Wiseant. I have a link to there where you can contact me there um, and we can schedule hourly appointments. Um, and I've got a few other things on here like a Facebook page um, and our social media. And if you're interested in getting professional development with me for like a team of teachers, a whole page with information on that. So yeah, feel free to check that out. Um, thank you.